Symbolism in movies is nothing new. Oftentimes it is constructed with care, but sometimes things happen for unexplained reasons. And there are images and patterns that emerge as if to tell us maybe perhaps we are following a planned path. Poltergeist is a Spielberg co-produced and written 1982 released horror classic directed by Toby Hooper, who produced and directed the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There's a measure of lore behind the first film and subsequent sequels due to supposed real skeletons being used on set and the tragic deaths of the main child star Heather O'Rourke and Dominique Dunn. There were also the deaths due to ill health of older actors Julian Beck and Will Sampson. Cursed film series distributed by Shudder addressed this so-called poltergeist curse but ignored a very stark and to this day absolutely unexplained mystery of the Super Bowl poster. Seen behind the bed of the family's son Robbie and above his presumably favored team, Los Angeles Rams helmet. Now, there's a great deal to unpack here, so please listen well. On the simplest level, the poster accurately predicts future Super Bowl 22 taking place in San Diego. The date of January 31st, 1988 would have been known, but when filming wrapped up in August of 1981, the sites of Super Bowl 19 and 22 taking place in 85 and 86, had not yet been decided, let alone 1988. After the movie was released in June 4th of 1982, at an NFL owners meeting in December of that year, those two Super Bowl locations, 85-86, were voted on, with further four Super Bowl locations being decided next in May of 1984. It is at that May of 1984 meeting where 14 cities bid for an opportunity to host one of four from 1987 to 1990. Now, due to the length of balloting, only 87 and 88 were decided at that meeting with Pasadena, California getting 87 and San Diego getting 1988. There is no reason why the poster would specifically focus on 1988. And in August of 1981, no one on set could have even known about San Diego's Joe Murphy Stadium being expanded, for example, which occurred in 1983 prior to the host meeting and was used as one of the pitches. The poster had to be custom made, the design basic enough, but then to be placed in a visible spot like that. Now San Diego happened to be the birth location of star Heather O'Rourke. So if we give some basis for whatever made this poster being a quiet promoter locally of San Diego, okay. But picking 1988, where Give some basis for whoever made this poster being a quiet local promoter, okay. But picking 1988, where it just so happened Heather O'Rourke was rushed to hospital on the day of the game, January 31st. The winning team of that Super Bowl, by the way, was the Washington Redskins. The only team named directly for native reference in the league. The Kansas City Chiefs, sometimes similarly cited, were actually renamed after moving from Dallas, where they were named the Texans, in honor of the mayor. So the Redskins beat the Broncos of all teams 42-10, to 10, and that's the end of it, right? Well, this is where we get into more coincidence or more symbolism. In the season of 1981, after filming, the Redskins would go an even 8-8, eight and eight, coincidentally playing the Los Angeles Rams to end the season. Now, in 1982, they go on to win it all. Now, the tragedies for both Heather O'Rourke and Dominique Dunn cannot be understated. And if we are to discuss any semblance of a curse, we look at the numbers associated with them. O'Rourke was born December 27, 1975. Dominic Dunn was born November 23, 1959. O'Rourke was age 12 when she died. Dunn was 22. O'Rourke's character in the movie is supposed to be 5. Dunn's is 16. On the exact day O'Rourke was born, there were several NHL games and two NFL playoff games. One of those NFL playoff games saw the Los Angeles Rams defeat the St. Louis Cardinals 35-23. to Now keep in mind, this is a playoff game, so they had to earn to get in there. And they win by a margin of 12. The head coach of the Redskins for the Super Bowl in 88 was Joe Gibbs, who happened to attend San Diego State. He wasn't born in California. 
He happened to attend San Diego State and was on the staff of that Cardinals team that lost to Los Angeles Rams in the playoffs in 1975 on December 27, 1975. Now, on that day, among the many NHL games that were being played, there was a game between the Kansas City Scouts, which only lasted for two seasons, Native American symbolism, losing by a margin of five to Los Angeles, in Los Angeles. And the only other team with Native American symbolism, although not named after specifically, and that's a long story, the Chicago Blackhawks were playing that day against the Toronto Maple Leafs, where the total score of their game was five. And there was a player with a unique name playing on the Leafs that day. Dave Dunn. His stat line being a five-minute penalty for fighting. Now, in case you're wondering, there haven't been many Dunns to play in the NHL. He was the only one in 1975. Now, aside from the name, his birth year of 1948 added together comes out to 22. Now, I understand anybody born in the 20th century, the first two digits are going to add to 10, but then you have the following two digits so they add to 22 okay that's so that's how that relates to dominic dunn now by 1982 that dunn was out of the league but another dunn by the name of richie with no relation was active and played on october 30th the day actress dunn was strangled by her former boyfriend his team won four to one the blackhawks meanwhile that day tied five five in Los Angeles on November 4th when the actress Dunn was taken off life support Richie Dunn's team won 7-5 and his stat line read 2 points and a plus 2 and on November 23rd her would be 23rd birthday his team won 6-3 against Washington and he registered point was plus 3 now he only scored 14 points on the year with a minus three, playing a full 80 games. So him scoring any points was rare. But what I saw more peculiar was 88 shots standing out. He was one of three players to register that exact amount that year, again, 1982, with one of the other players having the same birth year of 1957 as him. And again, that equates to 22, just like the first gun. Okay? But also that it was the only time Dunn would register the number 10 on a stat line. And in 1988, the year of O'Rourke's death, he played exactly 12 games. And the only time that number alone appears anywhere on his line, number 12. There were only two NHL games played on January 31st of 1988, by the way. One featured Dunn's team, without him, to a 4-4 draw. And the other having Washington win one nothing in overtime. Meanwhile, the third player to register exactly 88 shots that season, Ninamansky, who was much older than the other two. During the 81-82 season, when post-production of Poltergeist was in play, registered exactly 12 goals and 22 penalty minutes. That 22 marker for any of his access stats showing up, is the, that's the only season 22 shows up anywhere on his career. And then, the following year, he played exactly 22 games for St. Louis, including on October 30th, losing to Washington. Now back to the NFL. There were no games played the entire month of October 1982. The only time to date in Lee history that there's never been any football in the month of October due to a player strike. In fact, there was no football played on November 4th or 23rd either that year. Not in 1982 and not in 1959 when Dominic Dunn was born. There were no NHL games either on the 30th of October or 23rd of, no, uh, of November. The only game on the 4th of November ended 4-1. to one. What is interesting about 1959 is the birth of the AFL in which the Broncos were created. Okay, remember, the Broncos lose to the Redskins in 88 in the Super Bowl. Now, the NFL title game, meanwhile, in 1959, was played on the 27th of December with the Colts beating the Giants 31-16. to There were only two other NFL title games ever played on December 27th. 
in an earlier case, the losing team put up 16 points. Okay, so the same. And in the later case, the score was 27 to 0. Okay, there's an NFL title game on the 27th of December, and it ends 27 nothing. Very unique indeed. And another connection here is the Colts were the team that drafted Broncos quarterback John Elway, having to trade him. And in his first Super Bowl, which happened a year before 88 and 87, Elway would lose to the Giants, the team the Colts beat in 1959, remember, and their score was 39 to 20, which you, if you combine that, equals 59. And the head coach of the Broncos, Dan Reeves, would die on the first day of 2022. Finally, although past the polar guy's connection, there is one last unique number aspect for Super Bowl 22. It is the only one where if you combine the total games the teams had to play to reach the Super Bowl, and you just combine that number with the point total, you get 88, which is the last digits of the year the Super Bowl was played. There's no other Super Bowl like that, where if you do that, you get the year that the game is being played. Only that one. To be perfectly honest, if you go down the rabbit hole even further, there are other numbers. Like, for example, December 27th, 1975, that game against the Los Angeles Rams and the St. Louis Cardinals, right, with the intersecting personalities. Well, that game, not just the 12 margin, but if you look at the stats of that game, the Cardinals quarterback has 22 completions. The LA Rams quarterback, Ron Jaworski, has 12 completions. He also happens to wear number 16 in the game. Now, you understand that there's this contrast, first of all, that you have perhaps this destiny edge, if you don't know or think about it. Native American symbolism going through the Washington Redskins, and because it's Washington, it repeats itself. Los Angeles repeats itself. You have the contrast, all right, between Dominic Dunn, Heather Rourke, they're on opposite ends, and the repeat of the numbers in the movies. They're ages 22, 12 in real life, and in the movies 16 and 5. And the predictive capabilities of 88 and the mystery of this poster that you could look at it as an Easter egg that was put there by a human being but why what compelled that human being with what kind of foresight that it's a destiny line and this film these curses that we talk about it's simply already predetermined.